friend, Roger Christofferson here again with another first listener review. Uh, today, I just got done listening to Slipknot's new album, The End So Far, which I think was originally called The End For Now, but I guess they changed their mind, and I'm not sure why I'm talking like this, but uh, anyway, yeah, um, got to say about this one, um, I, I've been listening to Slipknot, I was kind of late to the game, um, probably been about 10 years maybe that I've been listening to these guys, um, Wait and Bleed was like the first thing I ever heard, you know, way back when that first came out, and in fact I don't remember what album that was on, so forgive me for that one, but I remember hearing it and thought it was a cool song, I like Corey Taylor's voice, I've always liked his voice, it's pretty cool, um, and then they got pretty, well they, I guess they were pretty brutal from the start, but that song uh, had a good mix of, you know, the singing and the brutal and everything, I thought it was pretty cool, but then I never really paid much attention to them from that point on, and so, uh, you know, maybe about 10 years ago, so, and then I went back and got the earlier stuff, and, you know, got everything from that point on, and kind of followed them ever since, um, I like, you know, I'm a fan of, uh, Stone Sour, Corey Taylor's voice, and his songwriting, stuff like that, um, although, I, Corey Taylor's solo album, I don't know what the heck that was, had a couple good songs, and the rest of it was just absolute garbage, so I don't know what he was doing there, but, uh, Stone Sour, I think, is pretty good. They're not quite as heavy as the Slipknot stuff, although sometimes they get pretty heavy. But, and of course, you know, they got shared members between the two bands. Um, well, one less now. But uh, anyway, I guess we'll just get right into this here and, and uh, get down to it. Um, one thing I will say about this one, it's probably the most mainstream sounding Slipknot album I've heard from these guys. It's not quite as. Uh, brutal as anything from their past. I don't know if that's just because they're trying to like broaden the horizons and try some new stuff. And I did hear some cool new things on here that sounded like they're experimenting with. Uh, especially the first song. I was kind of like, what in the world is this? Um, I think they released this one as a single here just a few days ago or maybe longer. It's called Adderall. It's weird. It starts with a uh, like an organ synthy type thing. And then when it finally starts kicking in a little bit, it sounds like a, it could actually be a drum machine. It very might possibly be a drum machine. It could be Jay. I don't really know. It doesn't really do anything. It's got you know some cool bass stuff going on it. It doesn't sound like Slipknot. I was like, I'm talk about experimental. It's nothing that I can even compare it to of anything they've ever done. It's kind of like just uh, I've. Pink Floydy sounding, maybe I don't know. I don't even know how to describe it. It's just kind of like straightforward, synthy. Corey sings, sings um, through the whole thing. There's no harshness at all to it, and then that's it. Doesn't really go anywhere. Thought it was just a really weird way to start an album. I I don't know why it's on here. I probably won't ever want to listen to that song ever again, quite honestly. Uh, then it goes right into uh, the dying song, which I actually did a review on here uh, a few months ago, a couple months ago, whenever it was first released. That's a decent song. Sounds like a Slipknot song. Doesn't sound like anything um, you haven't heard from them before. Um, it almost like they're trying to like, you know, do something that's heavy and mainstream at the same time, kind of like psycho social, psycho social. I can't even talk. Um, you know, I don't think they get a lot of grief for that song, but it's it's hard to write a song that's heavy and catchy. And I think, you know, when they do it right, they do it well. Stone Sour is like that. I wish, man, I wish they could blend, like, the catchiness of the Stone Sour songs with the heaviness of Slipknot. I don't think they've ever quite, either band has ever quite done that, personally, but Psycho Social is one of those ones that came close. This sounds, Dying Song sounds like they're maybe trying to, like, follow that formula. Um, I can almost say the same thing here with the the Chapel Town Rag. It's uh, heavy. It's got a little weird intro thing going on there. It's kind of cool, creepy, you know, stuff that they do. And you know, it's got the uh, heavy with the clean mix with the vocals. And that's a cool song. It's a decent song. It rocks. Um, I could almost say the same thing about Yen, which is uh, track number four in here. Well, that one's a little bit more slower. It starts with a a little bit slower, but one thing I think is cool with Corey is he knows how to blend. Like, it starts with a harsh vocal, like, just briefly, and then it goes into singing, but then it goes back to harshness. He kind of 
blends it like he doesn't just go from straight from one to the other he actually blends his voice into the scream which is cool I, I don't think I've heard him do that before um, he may have but I'm just not thinking of what a, what I've heard it before and it's got pretty catchy chorus to it it says you know, where it says to die for me over and over um, I could see that being maybe in one of the next singles out was a good song I liked it um, and then hive mind uh, it just sounds like uh, Slipknot. It's heavy, brutal. It's pretty much the same thing from beginning to end. It just uh, didn't really do a whole lot for me there. Um, and then Warranty, I, uh, the next song here, is really bored me to tears. I don't know what that one was. I couldn't understand a thing he said in that song. Um, you know, and I'm not ragging on the harsh vocals. I know a lot of people like that stuff. It's just not my thing. I just I like to know what they're saying, and I, I can't understand it. And I, maybe that makes me sound old or whatever, but I like to understand what they're saying. You know, what's the point of writing words if you can't understand any of them? You could just be saying anything. So never really quite got that. I don't know. I know people like that, but uh, I'm not gonna like say anything bad about people like it. But just for me, I just want to understand what it is they're saying, so I could just do without that. I think it's. If you can take a really heavy song and you can put a melody over the top of that, it doesn't have to be pretty or anything like that. Melodies can be, you know, diminished and augmented and harsh, but as if it's memorable, you know, that takes a little bit of talent and there's just nothing memorable about this. Uh, now, this is where, for me, where the album actually takes a turn for the better. Uh, Medicine for the Dead, I think, is great where they start you hear, you hear a little bit something new that I haven't heard from them before it's got the cool creepy spacey effect intro stuff going on which I really like um, it kind of drones a little bit the song it's not um, it doesn't get super heavy but it's heavy it's got some cool effects and it's dynamic it's got you know it, it builds like what a song should do that's probably this so far is like my favorite song on the album acidic is a uh, Next one on here that's also got a uh, cool vocal blend, you know, it goes back and forth from the singing to the harsh stuff. And the music mixes it up pretty good too. It starts, uh, you know, with some cool, uh, you know, fast drum stuff and then it goes slower again and the chorus is kind of heavy. Um, and, you know, I know Jay Weinberg has gotten like a lot of slack for his drumming. I've heard people complain about that. I thought it's, on this one especially, he thought he was doing some cool stuff. He's busy, and it's you know, it's it's one thing they when they slow their guitars and the bass and stuff down, and the drums stay busy. I think it's got a cool effect to it. I like that the way that blends, and he does a lot of that on this song. However, the end of the song just like drags on and on. And I just, like just didn't know how to end it. It just just end. I don't know. There was all this extra crap at the end that I just don't know why it was there. <clears throat> but, you know, that's just nitpicking, I guess. Um, Heirloom uh, is the next song on it. Um, good. It's just a straightforward rock song. It's got singing in it. You know, it's not doing a lot of the harsh stuff, but it's just kind of bland. It doesn't really... It's not good. It's not bad. It's just kind of there, you know. So I'd give it another listen, but I, I can't see that one doing much, uh, you know, sticking in your brain. Now the next song is H three seven seven, which I suppose is supposed to be hell with you know the numbers instead of the letters. Uh, this one's got a cool drum intro too. It's got this like tribal drum thing going on. Uh, the vocal's pretty harsh in this one. It's got an old Slipknot style where it just uh, it's almost like it's not even keeping time with the music. He's just but it it is at the same time. It's just kind of like going as fast as he can with the vocals. Just almost like scream talking you can understand what he's saying in this one though so i thought that was pretty cool it reminded me of the earlier slipknot stuff and still sounded new that the, the drum thing going on kind of kept it fresh for me so i mean as much as people you know have complained about his drumming i think uh he brought something to the table on this one especially and uh the other one i was mentioning there was uh acidic i guess it was um now the next one here, Desade, I think is how it's pronounced. Another cool drum intro. It's got some really moody guitars going on. It's got a really good vocal melody in this one. Um, it's got this cool, cool thing he does with the, the vocals It's uh, in the verses that 
he can hear the strain in his voice. Even though he's singing it, it you can hear the strain. And I think when Corey sings like that, he, he, you can feel the emotion in his voice, which is really what I like about his singing. Um, he, you know, when he really sings and he really gets into it, Corey's got a great voice. I don't care what people say about they like the harshness better. I think when he sings, and he sings with like conviction, he sings with a little bit of tension in his voice, he sounds great. Um, the thing he did with uh, Dave Grohl on that, uh, was it Probot? Or was it on Probot? Or was it on the Sound, stu uh, Sound Studio one? I can't even remember now. Maybe it was the Sound Studio one. Um, am I saying that right? Jeez, I can't even remember now. But anyway, whatever song was Corey did with Dave Grohl there, I can't even think of the name of it. I remember listening to it. So it had to be Sound Studio because I saw it in the, the movie of it. So that was... He was singing like his heart out in that one. I thought that was great how he how he managed to do that, and he really does have a good voice. Um, the chorus in this one's heavy, you know. It's still got uh, the singing, but it's harsh singing, and I just thought that uh, was really good. We did that. It's probably my favorite song on the on the whole album was that. Although the finale, the last song, which is kind of funny, it's the last song. It's called finale, so I don't know if that was a play on you know what they're trying to do with the title of the album too. This is a really good song too. This, that I think, "Medicine for the Dead," "Desade," and "Finale" are probably the highlights of this album. And it and it's you know it starts slow, but it builds up. It's got some uh, weird uh, background vocal. Sounds like female background vocal singing, and then the car, the guitar kind of mimics it for a little bit here and there. And there's a big choir you hear in the background, not up front, so it's distracting at all, although at the end of the song, the choir kind of becomes like the main thing that drags on and carries the song off to the end, uh, but uh, it's for the, the, the ma, 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 ma. Oh, geez, I'm getting excited about this one, <laughs> uh, the majority of the song, it's uh, this kind of stays in the background, so it's not distracting at all, which is good, it's how a song should build, and the guitar melody in this one too, like that's one good thing that Slipknot's good at. And it does a few other times throughout this uh, album too, but it really, really works well on this last song. There's just in the, not in the background, but it's mixed down just a little bit, so it's not distracting. You hear this just vo or a uh, guitar melody that just adds to the song, and uh, that's one thing that both uh, Slipknot and Stone Sour do well. But Slipknot really does it well on their heavier songs when they do that and uh, this one builds up really well it's probably got the best vocal melody of the, the whole album so if you're into that type of thing one thing I didn't like is they didn't try to copy like they, um, like snuff or anything like that there's nothing slow um, acoustic-y or anything like that on this uh, whole album so overall um, it's a good album uh, a couple ones that I could just deal without you know probably Maybe like three of them I could just you know skip over. So if I was going to make up a you know a song playback on this one, I could probably skip uh, like three of them because really they just didn't really do much for me. But the rest of it was decent. You know I'd probably give this like a six or seven out of ten, somewhere in that ballpark. I'm probably going to give it a few more listens. I, I did I did enjoy listening uh, to it. It wasn't exactly what I was expecting, and I like that. So when I'm caught off guard and in, in a good way, I like that. So. Uh, anyway, um, yeah, tell me what you guys think. You know, this is just my personal opinion on what I thought of the album. I'm sure everybody else has their own. And uh, love to hear what you guys think. You know, be sure to like, subscribe, all that fun stuff, share, whatever. Just interact. Let's have a conversation. Talk about Slipknot. They're a cool band. I like them. Um, yeah, until the, the next album, because I guess it's so far now. <laughs> uh, talk to you guys later. See ya.